Okay, next, um, attached to the load frame itself, we've already talked about how the cell is attached. Um, we'll talk about how the, the, on the cross beam here, which is, uh, which is right now tightened to a specific height, uh, there is a, uh, there's a, the load cell measuring the amount of force, and there's also a, an axial strain transducer to measure the amount of displacement during, or the axial strain, axial strain during the testing. Okay? Um, the testing itself requires, at least for the ELE software, requires six, um, six transducers. Okay? Um, I've just talked about two of them. One is the load cell to measure the amount of force. One is the axial uh, displacement or axial strain transducer that measures the amount of movement or, or strain during the test that the sample uh, encounters. Um, three, four, and five are the pressure transducers here at the input of the cell to measure the amount of confining or cell pressure, the amount of pour water pressure coming from the sample itself, and the back pressure or the saturation pressure, back pressure, to the sample for saturation purposes. Okay? So these are just standard pressure transducers that measure the amount of pressure. And the sixth one is back here. This is the volume change transducer, volume change unit. And that is designed to measure, it, first of all, it's designed to replace the measurement of burette, the water coming through the burettes, to digitally or automatically uh, monitor, the, monitor the amount of water going to and from the sample, to the sample during saturation and from the sample from, during consolidation, assuming that that's what occurs. Uh, essentially, this, it's quite, it looks complicated again, but quite a simple device if you, if you have it explained to you. This is just a unit that has essentially an LVDT similar to this axial strain transducer. This is an LVDT that has a piston attached to, uh, similar to this, attached to a, uh, uh, a piston with a bladder on it that as water flows into the top half of it, it moves down, the piston moves down, and as water flows through the bottom half of it, the piston moves up, or vice versa. And then what that does is that, it, that movement of LVDT is calibrated to the amount of water volume that's flowing through the top or bottom half of that piston. Okay? Um, and it also has uh, two controls uh, switches. One is on the left, and that the, the, the left switch here determines the direction of the piston or bypass, which means it's uh, horizontal. But if it's vertical up at saturation, which means it's positive water going into the sample, vertical down is consolidation, they are labeled, which would mean uh, water coming from the sample out to the burette during consolidation stage. Okay? The, va the valve on the right is just making sure that the electronics are turned on. So you just turn it on, for online, and the software will remind you to turn it on, or off, which is down, which is where we have it now for storage. And so when you, when you store it, I typically store it with uh, the left valve horizontal or at bypass, and the right valve at off or vertically down. And that's how I store it. And what that does is also allows water to flow through it without being monitored or measured at all, okay? Uh, and then when you, when you are monitoring the amount of water, you move the left valve either up or down and the right valve uh, horizontal or online. Okay. And um, the, last, uh, uh, piece of, well, the last piece of equipment we'll talk about is where all these transducers connect to. There are six transducers that all have wires coming through from them, as you can see, that connect into... Uh, what the ELA calls the ADU, or the Automatic uh, Autonomous Data Acquisition Unit, which is essentially a data acquisition unit designed to take uh, analog input, convert them to digital, signal conditioning, and communicate that data to a computer software. Okay, and it does that with a number of of uh, different transducers. Uh, this particular unit uh, was purchased with an additional eight-channel expansion card or module. So this has 16 channels in it right now, and every ADU has the opportunity to have up to four eight, put, eight channel inputs, which means you can have up to 32 channels for each ADU. 
and each channel can be monitored individually and uh, simultaneously, assuming it is, is no matter how many transducers you have connected into it. Okay? And what the software does is then group the certain transducers together to generate a what the software calls a machine. For instance, I mentioned already that there are six transducers connected in, in channel one through six here in this ADU. In the software, I have grouped these six transducers together to generate one machine for a triaxial effective stress test. <coughs> so that, that generates uh, a grouping of these six transducers for one specific test. Uh, the, only, uh, the only real maintenance that's required on this ADU is that we recommend that it not be turned off for a very long period of time because um, it's designed to be able to withstand power failures, things like that, through a battery to hold all the memory of the data that has been collected through it. But that, that battery will eventually begin to die and not be able to recharge if it's, if it's not plugged in and being charged often. So if you were to remove this and store it, we recommend that you plug it in for a couple days every six months or so, just to make sure the battery is, uh, is being recharged. So when you do decide to use it, it does have the battery for memory purposes of the data. Okay. Uh, one good feature that the ADU, another good feature that the ADU has is uh, it has a card here that has five uh, LEDs to tell you what's going on with the ADU. The very bottom one is, is a red LED with, that says power, and that just means that we have power on. The one right above it is, a, is an amber or yellow a, uh, LED, which is P fail, which means if that light is on, it, it, it has encountered a power failure. It's lost power it's, for some reason. Could you hold on? Move that cable that is stacked. No, 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 the black. Right. Put it down. Yeah, no. Okay. Now, if you could explain that portion of the LEDs again. Okay, that's better. Okay, cool. Uh, another good feature to the ADU is the, this bank of LEDs that has five uh, LEDs here that. Uh, provide information to the user. The very bottom LED is a power, it's a red LED that's, that just means we have power going and the power is turned on. The one right above that is P fail, which means uh, power failure. It's an amber LED and if that's on, that means that it's encountered a power failure at some point. Uh, whether it be you've turned it off or the building has had a power failure or something. And what that lets you know is that if the, if the power has failed, the data from the transducers has not been collected for some period of time. But if it's back on and it's telling you power is failure, it is still collecting data from the, from the transducers once the power came back on. Hence the point of the memory. The memory can, collects all of the data beforehand and afterwards, but during the power failure, you're going to have no data. Right above that, you have a, a, a green light that is blinking every second, that's the scan light. What that is doing is scanning all transducers every second for data. And that uh, is also collecting that data as needed. The one right above that is a, another red light, called, uh, which is labeled error, which means you have some sort of error within your transducers. And uh, we can talk about that here in just a little bit with the, when we have the software on. And the very top one is, is another green one that flashes. It's called comms. And that means it's communicating with the software. The ADU is communicating with the software, and the data is being transferred from the memory of the ADU into a file on the software itself, okay? And that will flash during that, during that time when it's communicated, okay? You will notice another uh, light over here, another green LED that's flashing uh, at the same time as the scan light is flashing. What that means is that as it scans these transducers for data, this very left card is converting analog signal to digital signal. And that's all that it's telling you is as it's scanning, it's converting, a to D, it's an A to D converter being utilized, okay? Um, again, I would recommend just, if you're going to test, just leave this on, leave the power on all the time. 